I want to start with thank you for making me laugh like a crazy person. I appreciate it. Yay, that was one of the goals. Uh, and, and you did it. Um, <laughs> but before we get into Cocaine Bear, which I love saying the title, um, if someone has actually never seen anything that you've acted in before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Wow, um, I think Effie Trinket in The Hunger Games because I just lo I love the journey that she makes, especially in Catching Fire. I would watch the second one, Catching Fire, because she really, um, for me, I think really goes on an incredible journey and she looks good doing it. Those costumes were very good. Yeah. This is one of those projects that I really can't believe got made. The title I can't believe was approved. I can't believe the MPAA let this happen. So what was there anything like that actually um, almost derailed this? You know, someone saying we can't make this. You know, the only thing that could have derailed it, frankly, was if we didn't believe um, that Weta could deliver the bear because everything else was about being bold. It was about being audacious. It was about, you know, challenging people to uh, create something that lived up to the title Cocaine Bear, <laughs> right? And to me, the biggest risk of the entire endeavor was I, 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 had no, I had no lead character. Like the bear was never gonna be there and it had to work, it had to be real, it had to be like, photorealistic documentary of a bear in the woods. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I didn't know if it, if it was gonna work out. And of course I had great partners in Weta. Weta delivered the most beautiful bear I could imagine and an incredible per performance for that bear. You know, with the collaboration was just a dream. And um, it, 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 it's the only way the movie works is if the bear works. Weta does do incredible work. Um, and with the challenges of the VFX industry, it's great you had um, a great partner like that. They were excited to do it. They're used to doing, you know, like superheroes flying through space and time and warps. And I don't you know, this was like old school. Like, can you make this bear look like, I want people to ask me if there was a real bear on set. Like, that's how real it has to be. And I, I really think they they did it. There are some fantastic kills in this movie that are, bloody as um, beep and um, just stuff that made me very, I was very much enjoying it, watching it in the theater. Did you actually have a favorite of the kills or one that you are really excited for audiences to see? I don't, I hate giving things away, um, but I will say this. I, I wanted to make sure the audience remained surprised and I did not think that the bear should kill everybody. I felt that the humans, the, the hubris of the humans um, is really the villainy in the picture, right? It's about like humans thinking they can control nature and humans, the, their level of greed, you know, and like their, their, um, their sense of superiority. And it's like, that's what the villainy was. So anytime we could play with somebody's um, bad instincts and turn it and and murder someone because of it that those were the surprising ones that made me the most happy what was it actually like showing it to the MPAA for the first time and did they actually ask you to pull back on anything no it was r rated from jump i mean they didn't ask us to do anything we i was honestly i was never worried about the gore or the blood or the kills or the action because you know that's in many many other r rated movies i was worried about the kids like what were they, you know, the kids doing, um, you know, being with the drugs and, um, but at the end of the day, everybody was okay with it. I mean, I mean, you know, it's R rated, it's for adults, but um, I didn't have to, I did not have to make any sacrifices for the movie. Everything that I hoped would be in the film is in the film. How did, I'm fascinated by the editing process because that's where it all comes together. Yeah. So how did the film possibly change in the editing room in ways you didn't expect? You know, honestly, it's that I had to give up so much amazing stuff with these actors. You know, I mean, the the original introduction of Carrie's character, she was singing in her kitchen um, this Mamas and Papas song, and she was so nervous about singing. She's never sang on camera before, and she had done this incredible work and it's not in the movie. So to me, the, the worst part about the edit was all the amazing stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor. That said, my goal was to tell this story in 95 minutes. You know, I just think this concept, it should be done efficiently. 
It should be fun, it should be wild, and then you should go have a drink after and talk about it with your friends. I won't lie, when I found out the runtime, I was like, oh, this is a, this is fucking perfect. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, this movie doesn't need more time than it, than, than it took, you know? So I, that, 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 that's what I mean by the editing. The script actually was, had a lot more character development. It was really beautiful, but at the end of the day, people want to see a bear on cocaine killing people, so that's what we did. Oh, no, 100%. That, 100%. Um, you have a joke in the movie Four Pines uh, Mall, which is a little nod to Back to the Future. Can you talk about that? We had we have those kinds of nods all over, little little Easter eggs throughout the movie. That was one of them. Thank you for picking that up. Um, we, you know, we also, for instance, like when you meet Dee Dee in her bedroom, there's a poster of Madonna. I was a 12 year old girl in 1985, so I very much related with Dee Dee. She basically is like had my room. I had that Papazon chair, you know, that everybody had with the like Afghan blanket that your grandma knit for you. Um, but more importantly, she's obsessed with Madonna, which I was also. There's a poster of Madonna on her wall wearing black overalls and a white t-shirt and, and the rubber bracelets. And then Brooklyn wears that outfit throughout the movie. So it's little, little things like that, you know? Jane, the, the opening song was an homage to What Had American Summer. Yeah, I didn't realize that, but yes. that I, um, <laughs> uh, Was it tough not, was it, did you have, uh, with Isaiah in the movie, you have the whole, you know, shit. Um, can you... Did, how much debate was there with that? Because it's an iconic line that he, you know, is famous for. We did debate it. He did do it on set. He loves doing it. It's his favorite thing to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, the thing that got the biggest reaction um, was him on the roof making those noises when he can't climb down. You know, they're like, uh, buh, like he, the entire crew fell out laughing. I mean, we... I couldn't call cut. It was so enjoyable watching him do that. And while he was, when it was happening, I thought to myself, this is going to be in the movie. And it, and it is. <laughs> Last thing for you. Do you know what you're actually going to direct next? Are you looking at scripts? I'm, I'm always looking. Sure. I mean, you never know, you know, you never know when something's going to pop up. I mean, this came truly out of nowhere. Um, and so I am always looking, but I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to take a really long nap, Steve. I'm going to nap for like three weeks after this comes out, hopefully. Um, on that note, I have to stop. I'm just going to say, I really hope it's a huge hit for you. And, Thanks. um, I really did laugh a lot watching it. Great. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the ride.